Good morning, folks. This is Todd Coburn of Cal Poly Pomona with Arrow 3261's Lecture 15. This lecture is going to cover canned equations. How do we solve beam, slope, and moment problems using canned equations? This is actually the way that most of these kind of problems are solved in industry because many of the beams that we'll encounter can be approximated as one or more simple uh, basic beams that we then can combine to evaluate the deflections and sometimes also the slopes and other things. In order to do these, we're going to be using our handbook and we are going to be going to the appendix. We're going to be going to appendix D, where we see beams like this. What we're going to do is when we encounter a beam is we're going to look and see if the beam that we encounter has the constraints and the loading that is shown in one of the cases of the handbook. If it is, then we will look to find out what pieces of information we can use. For example, many of these have the deflection uh, this is what's most commonly used for this. Many of these also have the slope. That's less common in other books in industry, but that also can be found often. And some also give you reactions and moments. Anything that's not given needs to be analyzed by hand. Anything that is given, you can save a lot of time by simply applying these equations uh, that are here in the book. Now we're going to find that if we can see the exact beam and loading that we have in the handbook, then it's very easy to apply this method. If not, a lot of times what we can do is idealize our beam as a collection of uh, loads or change the supports using principles of superposition and then combine these. That's what this lecture talks about. And let's see, uh, take a look at how that works. Let's start out by just looking at an example. If we look at a beam like this cantilever beam, <clears throat> we find that since this is, is a determinant beam, it's rather easy to solve for the shear and moment by statics by hand, even just using shear and moment diagrams. We can also write the equation of the curve by making one section cut of the beam and writing the equation or the shear and moment, or we can write a singularity function, which is rather simple for this beam as well. However, we're going to look at today how we can use uh, canned equations, formulas that are provided in a number of engineering texts, including our aerospace strength handbook, volumes both one and two. And if you look at appendix D, case 1A, we will find that this exact beam is listed and that we see the uh, equation of the curve, the elastic curve, and the max and minimum, uh, the maximum deflection and the maximum slope for this beam. This is the equation that's provided <clears throat> for the elastic curve. And so instead of calculating this ourselves, or even writing a singularity function and integrating, obviously it'll be more simple to having found that this is a can simple case to just grab this equation for the curve and we now can calculate the deflection of the curve at any point along the beam. Now if we wanted to do that we could then investigate this, take the derivative to find out where it's a local maximum minimum or we can just glance uh, at right below in the same place where it provides the maximum deflection, which obviously occurs at the right end at B. Now it's shown as negative since the deflection is downward and not in the positive upward direction. And we also see that the maximum slope is provided as well, which means we don't have to do anything other than grab the equation, plug and chug, and this is how industry professionals would handle this beam. Obviously, even if you're very good at calculating the elastic curve for beams, 
it's going to be a much greater chance of efficiently and rapidly calculating the deflection if you, instead of calculating it yourself, if you grab these values out of an appropriate table. This means for this particular beam, we could uh, show this is a downward deflection. And the way we would show our deflections is either, usually it's better, rather than just using a positive or a negative, which leaves sign convention a little bit to the imagination to actually show a visual, for example, here where we show that the deflection is downward and that this, the slope of the beam at the free end is going to be at the angle given or calculated by this equation and uh, just below the horizontal. Now, if we, <clears throat> while we have the uh, equation of the elastic curve and the maximum deflection and the maximum slope, if we wanted to see what the slope was at any other point of the curve, we look in the table and most texts will not provide the equation for the slope as a function of x, even though some will provide the maximum slope. Now, we could start over and using statics or using singularity functions, go and write the equations of this and solve as we have in the last two lectures. But in this particular example, since we already have the equation of the elastic curve, or y of x, we can calculate theta of x by simply differentiating once. Or as we said last lecture, we'll call it differentiation because it's so simple to do this particular differentiation. We, all we need to do is differentiate our equation for the elastic curve. When we differentiate this equation, it can be easily to miss, because this is written in simplified form, px squared over 6ei to the quantity x minus 3l, to go and try and take the derivative of x squared and then forget about the x minus 3l. To differentiate this, what we really should do is make sure that each term only has one x value in it. So we would multiply this out, which means we have p over 6ei times x cubed minus 3lx squared. When we differentiate that, we're going to get p over 6ei times the quantity 3x squared minus 6lx. If we then pull out the extra x, we get what's shown here, px over 6ei times quantity 3x minus 6l as shown. So, using the canned equations, we see that we can get the equation for the elastic curve and the max deflection and the max theta frequently from these, from these tables. Actually, it's very common to get the maximum deflection for these and to sometimes get the sh equation for the shear and or moment. But it's less common to get the equation for uh, the slope, the maximum slope. Although I have provided it in our handbook for a number of the examples. Whenever we do have the equation for the full elastic curve, it then becomes quite easy to calculate the equation for the slope by simply differentiating as we did in this example. If we look at another example, for example, this one from Beer and Johnson, we see we have another cantilever beam with a moment at the end. This is also quite easy to handle by hand using shear sure moment diagrams or using a singularity function since only one term will be needed. But it's even easier if we first look at our handbook. If we look at our handbook, we find the case 1D in Appendix D has this exact beam, except that it's reversed. Now, the reversal can cause many students to make a mistake, so you have to be rather careful. Usually, the, the magnitude will still be the same, so that's not too difficult, but getting the direction can be a little confusing. The easiest way to solve something like this, when it's reversed, is to do a reversal of x. So instead of defining x from left to right, as shown in the original figure, we now redefine x from the right end to the left end, 
and then can plug and chug into the equation. We see that the equation for the elastic curve, y of x, is given in case 1d, and where x is just as defined in the figure now, moving from right to left. We also see that we get the y max term, and we see the theta max term is also available. Once again, if we want to uh, define x from the left side as we normally do, we then would have to rewrite x by saying x is equal to L minus x. So then we plug that into our original equations. So the equation of the elastic curve from the left end is m over over 2vi quantity L minus x squared, and the slope would be done similarly. Of course, while we do have the maximum slope in our book, we don't see the equation for the slope as a function of x. So the best way to get this is to simple differentiate, simply differentiate as shown here. Make sense? Piece of cupcake. Moving on, example three. We have another one, slightly more complicated, also rather simple in this particular case. We have our three choices again. If we use canned equations, we find this is listed in appendix D, case 1C, and once again we have a reversal of sign convention. These are the equations given when it's a cantilever beam that's reversed. In order to solve this, we either define x in the way we're showing in blue here, or we need to do a reversal. If we want the theta of x, we then differentiate again, and as we have before, and I'm sure you guys can do that. Now, if we have an equation, a beam like this, example four, we find a cantilever beam that's uh, got a gradient load on it. We look in our little trusty handbook, and we don't find this particular case, although we could develop this case rather simply with singularity functions. Since this is not in Appendix D, our singularity functions are the way to solve it. This could also be solved rather simply by simply using shear moment diagrams. Our next example is a more complicated loading. Now, we look at our handbook, Appendix D, and we don't see this combined loading anywhere. However, load, if we could find each piece of the load in our CAN set of equations, we could simply write the equations for the deflection and slope, and being careful to uh, keep the exact same nomenclature, and with our positive and negative conventions, we could superimpose the results from the two cases. So if we first look for a cantilever beam with a distributed load, we find, no, we don't have a cantilever beam with a distributed load over, over uh, two-thirds of the P beam. So that means because that doesn't exist in our handbook, we would have to calculate it ourselves. And therefore, singularity functions are probably the easiest way to solve this. Here is another example. This one also has multiple loads. Once again, we look in our handbook and we don't see this case anywhere. However, we do see a case for a cantilever beam with a point load. That's case 1a. And we see a case for a cantilever beam with an end moment, that's case 1D. So, if we take the results from each of these, for example, the elastic curve would be the summation of these two. The shear and moments would also be the combination. So if we look at case 1A, we see that we get the first term of the elastic curve. If we can look at case 1D, we get the second term of the elastic curve being careful to make sure that the nomenclature, the constraints are the same, and the nomenclature is the same, and therefore we have these two loads, both of which, using consistent sign convention, gives us the total uh, equation for the elastic curve. Our slope equation, we don't have, but we do have the maximum slope, which we could also combine, and we could also go and calculate the values in the other point. So this is all we need to do to solve these kinds of problems. 
This is a little bit of an introductory kind of lecture on use of canned equations. When we're doing tests and homework and things, what we need to be is alert for directions on how the beam is to be solved. If no information or direction is given about what method to use, feel free to use the easiest method that you can find to solve the beam. If you're told to use calculus, that means we're going to make section cuts and solve for the shears and moments using statics. If we say to use singularity functions, we will write the equation for the loading function and then integrate and then apply our boundary conditions. If I say use canned equations, we will go and utilize the equations in the back of the book. If no direction is given on what method to use, what you should do is have the engineering judgment to know what is the easiest method that you can apply to maximize the chance of you getting a correct solution that you understand. Usually, if the beam is listed in whole or in part by one of the equations, the canned equations in the back of the handbook, that's going to be your best bet for nailing the solution. That's all we have on canned equations. Go out there and practice until you understand it.